Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina and former U.N. ambassador under the Trump administration, now making her 2024 presidential run official. Uh, she's got a, a big event today in Charleston, minutes away, I believe at 11 a.m. this morning. Uh, but what does this mean now that she has come forward officially for the Trump base, if you will? Does this sway some of the voters that would vote for former President Trump? As you take a live look here, again, this in Charleston, South Carolina, at any moment, she's set to, again, take the stage. This would be the first time she's taking the stage since her major announcement in a campaign video that National Report brought you yesterday. All right, you've gotten a crowd that's excited to hear from her today. Alina Haba is joining us now live, managing partner of Haba, Medeo and Associates. Alina, thanks for coming on. You've worked very closely with the former Former President Donald Trump, who was also in the race for the GOP nomination in 2024. How do you think Nikki Haley's announcement will play with the Trump base? Um, I don't think it'll really affect it. Um, as Donald Trump has said, and, and former president has made clear, he, he really is going to welcome anybody who wants to run to run. Um, you know, he's a tried and true Republican at heart and anything that'll be better for America, which is anything other than the current administration. Um, I don't think Nikki Haley, though, politically would pose too much of a threat. We'll have to see what happens. But the Trump base is the Trump base. Um, it's going to be very difficult to waver from that. My only concern with it becoming oversaturated is that perhaps what we could see is a uh, cannibalization of sorts between other candidates, um, you know, the DeSantis's, the Pompeo's, the Tim Scott's, if they choose to run. Yeah. Um, so I'm not I'm not really concerned. Yeah, there yeah, 2016 it was a crowded field as as we remember. So will that be the same in 2024? We're just getting a taste of it with Nikki Haley there. We'll continue to watch that event for any news breaking. Uh, but if you are coming out as a conservative and you want to speak up, if you're trying to do so on Newsmax and you have Direct TV, you're not going to be able to do that because Direct TV dropped Newsmax, the second conservative channel to be the platform by Direct TV in the past 12 months. Elena, what do you think about AT T's decision dropping Newsmax from all of its platforms. Do you have an opinion on that? Some say they're trying to silence conservative voices, maybe in favor of more liberal leaning channels. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are solely based on what I hear, not part of whatever the knowledge that maybe the internal executives at Newsmax would have. But from what I understand and optic wise, they're struggling and it's inappropriate to try and censor conservative voices, especially those that tend to be doing better than some of the traditional, I would say, left-wing media, you know, CNN, MSNBC. Um, obviously, Newsmax was effective. Uh, like I always say, whenever they hit me, just like they're hitting Newsmax, if you're effective, they're going to come after you. And uh, if you're not, they won't. So <laughs> I think that, you know, it's a scary time in our, in our country. I think that we should not be censoring either side of the voices, either liberal or uh, conservative. But after doing this to OAN and now Newsmax, especially with the ratings as they were, it's a very clear uh, issue that needs to be investigated. And I think the House Oversight Committee will do that. We'll wait and see if there are uh, any moves from Congress. Alina Haba, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Always. Thanks for being here.